Our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is described in the Quran with remarkable words and some of them are وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that we didn't send you except as an act of love and care for all nations and all people. But you know that in our times, a lot of people read the literature of Islam and make criticism about Islam and criticism about the Quran and even criticism about our Messenger And one of the most popular criticisms of the Quran is one of, that the last surah to be revealed or one of the last surahs to be revealed in the Quran in the order of the Quran is the ninth surah, Surah At-Tawbah. And it's the only surah of the Qur'an that doesn't begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And this surah is very harsh from the beginning. It is a surah about the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know, the non-Muslims love quoting parts of this surah, kill them wherever you find them. And you know, all the things that you think are politically incorrect about Islam are all in this one surah. And on top of that, it doesn't even begin with Rahmah. It doesn't begin with the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And on top of all of that, it's one of the last surahs revealed. So it gives the impression that, okay, fine, you, you people say your messenger was this mercy. We say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they don't say it. Your messenger was this mercy, but how come the last surah that was given to him is so violent? This seems to be the final policy of Islam. Just fight and kill and fight and kill. That's what it seems like. And how do you even respond to that? So a lot of times Muslims who have love and reverence for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam don't know how to respond to these kinds of things. And I want to dedicate the few minutes we have today to help you understand this surah of the Qur'an, some things about this surah, and how this surah is actually an explanation of the love and mercy of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I started by saying that this surah came without the basmala. There's no bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And that's very clear an indication from Allah that this surah will not have Allah's mercy in it. This surah will not have Allah's, you know, kindness and softness and gentleness in it. And every other surah of the Quran does. As a matter of fact, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said about this surah, this surah came, you know how the swords have a cover, the sheath? This surah came with the sword out of the sheath. That's what he used to say about this surah. So now, let's take a step back. Allah Azza wa didn't just talk about Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran, He's talked about many prophets. And Allah says that the way He sent prophet after prophet after prophet, they all had the same message. Places like Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah will describe prophets that came at different centuries, in different nations, they spoke different languages, but their message was exactly word for word the same. Fattakullaha wa ati'oon. Have taqwa of Allah and follow me. Salih said the same thing. Nuh, thousands of years ago before him, said the same thing. Shu'aib said the same thing, alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam said the same thing. They all, they were in different nations, different times, different languages, but they're all saying exactly the same thing. And Allah Azza wa Jal adds in the Quran, وَلَن تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا you will not find a change in the way Allah does things. Like we say the Prophet has a sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says even Allah has a sunnah. Even Allah has a way of doing things. And Allah does not change the way He does things. Like it's, you know how you have a judge, sometimes he judges one way, but next day he's in a different mood, he gives a different kind of verdict. It's not like that with Allah. The way Allah deals with all people is exactly the same. There's no new policies or special policies. So why am I bringing all of this up? Because prophets used to come, and when prophets came, majority of the nations that they came to, the majority of those nations, they rejected the prophets. Most of the time, this is what happened. They rejected the messengers of Allah. And when they rejected the messengers, they even sometimes tried to kill those messengers. To not only ridicule them and mock them, but also even try to kill them. But even if they didn't try to kill them, it came to the point that their corruption became so huge and they were refusing to accept the message of Allah that Allah would tell people like Hud alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, Shu'aib alayhi salam, you know, Lut alayhi salam, it's time to go. These people are beyond hope. Their da'wah has been given to them. The message has been explained in the best possible way to them. Every opportunity for them to understand in theory and in practice has been made clear and they still want to reject. Allah knows what is inside the hearts. Allah tells the prophets, these people have no possibility of accepting Islam in their hearts left. And at that point, Allah decides that those nations, because they have no good left in them, they should be destroyed. So you find in the Quran, the nation of Nuh gets destroyed. The nation of Lut gets destroyed. 
The nation of Saleh gets destroyed. The nation of Shu'ayb gets destroyed. Fir'aun gets destroyed. The nation that Musa salam came to gets destroyed. Nation after nation after nation, when they reject the Messenger of Allah, who is among them, when they do that beyond the point of no return, then the only thing that Allah does with them, not only punishment in the next life, Allah gives them punishment in this life before the next life. That's, that's the sunnah of Allah. The final messenger of Allah is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he first and foremost came to a town in Arabia, Makkah, to a people whose name is Quraysh. And those people, he gave them every possible way of accepting the message. And the best message ever, the best version of the message ever revealed by Allah, the Quran, was given to the, the most ranking messenger of Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they had the best teacher ever, ever sent, and they had the best curriculum ever sent, the best message ever sent. And he was also from among them, min anfusikum, he was from within you, meaning he wasn't some foreigner that they can't understand. He was someone they could relate to, they understood, they respected. So they had every opportunity to accept Allah's message. And Allah gave them one surah, and another surah, and another surah, and another surah, and they rejected, and they rejected, and they rejected, and they rejected. And then Allah finally told His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that these people are beyond hope. You must leave to Medina. So the Messenger وسلم, leaves the people of Quraysh. And then Allah makes them taste small punishments. This is also a sunnah of Allah. We will make them say, taste the smallest punishments before we make them taste the big punishments. So Allah made them taste Badr. He gave them some taste in Uhud. He made them taste Ahzab. When the Prophet وسلم, battled with the people of Mecca, that was actually Allah's punishment on them also. One after the other after the other. But still, even after these small signs, they still didn't humble themselves. They still did not believe. And finally, Allah Azza wa Jal gave the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam victory over Quraysh. But now let's compare. This is the important part now. This is where you understand the mercy of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, when Nuh Alaihi Salam used to tell his people a flood is coming, I'm building this ark, I'm building this giant boat, this ship, you better get on board if, if you believe in Allah. That's why I'm building it. They made fun of him. They would come and they would bring their children to laugh at him. And he's putting these planks and these pieces of wood together for months and years. And they would come and they would ridicule him. Then it started raining. They're still laughing at him. This man thinks this rain is going to turn into a, an ocean. Silly man. Believers get on the ark. They're still not taking him seriously. But as the water starts rising, then they say, this ship isn't going to work. This old man built this ship. They don't, we call him alayhi salam. They didn't respect him. You know, Quran describes how much they insulted him actually. So when they made fun of him, they said, this boat, this ark isn't going to survive. We'll just climb up, up the, on the mountains. The mountains are way safer than this, this ship of his. It's going to be, it's going to sink. And that's actually what his son said too. I'll go find refuge in the mountain. It'll protect me from the water. I'm not getting on this boat for you. But then the water keeps rising and rising and rising until even the mountains are flooding. Even the mountains are going under the water. And at that point, Allah did not press the pause button and say, Hey, now you want to take Islam seriously? No, once the water reaches here, it keeps on going, doesn't it? And at that point, when the water reaches here, people say, Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll accept, I'll believe. This is exactly what Fir'aun did. When Fir'aun followed Musa salam in the water, and the, his army drowned first. The old man, he was an old man, his entire army drowned and he was the only one left. And as the water starts getting to his throat, he says, آمَنْتُ بِالَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ And بِأَنَّوْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ I believe in the same one these people of Israel believe in. Fine. لا إله إلا الله. Fine, fine. And Allah says, Al-an, now, just now you were disobeying, a second ago, what da'wah came to you? He just wants to save his neck. And at that point, Allah does not stop, you see. But the point I'm trying to make is, once the punishment has been the issue, the order has been issued by Allah, that this nation will be punished, then their istighfar and their opportunity, give me some more time, let me think about it one more day, that's done. وَلَا يَأْتِيَنَّهُمْ بَغْتَةً وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ It will come to them all of a sudden, and they will have no clue. 
That's the way Allah does things with all of the prophets. Read the stories of all of the punishments. Once it starts, it doesn't stop. But the punishment that was coming to Quraysh, because they did the same thing the people of Nuh did, didn't they? They did the same thing that Fir'aun did. They did the same thing that the nation of Hud and Salih and Shu'ayb and Lut did. Disobey Allah's Messenger. And as a matter of fact, they even went further, they tried to kill Allah's Messenger. So they should be punished more than anybody else. Allah did not give Quraysh a flood, did He? Allah did not give them an earthquake. Allah did not send fire from the, the sky. That's what He used to do with all the previous nations. So how did Allah fulfill His Sunnah on the Quraysh? How did Allah give these people punishment? The point that I'm trying to make before we get there, I remind you, Allah only destroys nations when a messenger is living among them and they reject him. Allah destroys nations when the messenger is among them. Not when he's gone, when he's among them. And if they still reject him, then no good. This is why Allah Azza wa told the Quraysh in the Quran, because they were trying to kill him and get rid of him. Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah won't destroy them until you, so long as you're still among them. The only re one of the reasons Allah hasn't destroyed them is you're still there. You're still, subhanAllah. They think he's the problem. He's the only reason they were alive. He was the reason they were alive. Anyway, now Allah gave Makkah in the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, a hundred thousand have now conquered Makkah. There's not even a war. They gave up. Like, how are they going to fight these many people who come for Hajj? And now the worst enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people who tried to kill him, the people who ridiculed him, the people who tortured him, the people who tortured the believers. Now they are sitting on their knees and the swords of the Sahaba are on their neck. The swords of the Sahaba are on their neck. This is time for Allah's punishment to begin. Yes or no? This, Allah says, يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ This time, instead of a flood, instead of an earthquake, instead of fire from the sky, Allah will punish Quraysh by your hands, meaning the Sahaba. The Sahaba became Allah's punishment on them. And now, by the way, when the sword reaches here, I told you when the water reaches here, does it stop? No. When the sword reaches here, should it stop? No. But Allah says, no. Stop. Stop. فَسِيحُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ غَيْرُ مُعْجِزِ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مُخْزِ الْكَافِرِينَ Okay, now that the water has reached here and the sword is here, now you know that Allah has overpowered you. Now, how about you take four months? Take four months. Think about it. And if you want to accept Islam, fine. If you don't want to accept Islam, leave and no harm will come to you. And after four months, if you want to face the sword, that's up to you. You want to fight? Go ahead. But Allah gave how much? Was any was, was Nuh السلام, the people the water reached here or the fire came from the sky or the earthquake started and a couple of homes got destroyed and then it paused and the angel said had enough ready to listen to the Prophet Salih ready to listen to Shu'aib ready to listen to Nuh now how about you take four months I'll be back that never happened the only messenger that was given a pause before Allah's punishment would be executed is who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on top of all of that you know when you have a village you have a town some people hear the message other people are busy in their own life they don't, they don't know anything going on outside like some of you that are addicted to video games you don't know what's happening outside in the world you're on your playstation you know so sometimes somebody came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said uh, I didn't know you were giving da'wah in Mecca I was sleeping at home for 23 years Badr happened, Uhud happened, Ahzab, I had no idea. Now I hear that we have four months, what's going on? Four months for what? You know? So they would come like that to the Prophet and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. And Allah says about them in this surah, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهُ If one of these mushrikeen come to you and say, I really don't know what you're talking about, I want to know more. Allah says, give him protection. Until he gets to hear Allah's speech, of, uh, Allah's speech and then take him to a place where he feels safe. Take him so he doesn't feel pressure. So he doesn't feel pressure. This is the surah of the punishment of Allah on the nation of who? Quraysh. Now listen, Allah has punished nation, nations before, yes or no? Yes. 
And Allah punished Quraysh by this surah, by this surah of these four months, this four months of time period. And so many of them accepted Islam within that time. Some of them ran away. Some of them even tried to fight. All of that happened. All of that happened. But you know what? What's amazing about this is this is the last time. Actually, before I finish that sentence, let me take a step back. Nuh salam, when Allah was giving the message to the people, Allah was giving them with love and mercy. But when the flood started, the mercy of Allah was paused. Yes, it was paused. Because of time for punishment. When Salih salam, or Hud salam, or Shu'ib salam, they were given the message from Allah's love and mercy. But when the punishment begins, the mercy has been paused. You can't have mercy and punishment at the same time. The Quran gave us one surah, for these four months even, after these four months, the mercy of Allah will be paused. For who? For Quraysh. But that is actually one of the greatest mercies to humanity. Allah's mercy, Allah's love, and Allah's care will never pause again for humanity. No nation will ever be destroyed after this. Even the last one to be destroyed was given four months, and after this, the mercy of Allah is forever open. So the missing Bismillah in Surah At-Tawbah is actually an indication of how that was the last time Allah, because it's the last messenger, that is the last time a nation should get the direct punishment of Allah in this life. And from here on, every nation gets to survive. No nation gets wiped off of the face of the earth because they disobeyed Allah. That will not happen again. That is a rahmah, that is a, an act of love and an act of care that Allah granted as an award to Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No other messenger received this. And then, finally, this surah did not begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, yes? And I recited to you an ayah that belongs to the conclusion of this surah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ A messenger has come to you from within your own selves. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ Anything that harms you, he finds it very difficult for himself. He has so much empathy for you. Allah Azza wa Jal describes in His Qur'an that even when He came back, Allah wants to punish them after four months, yes? But Rasulullah came back sallallahu alayhi wa and said, لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمِ No harm will come on you today. He wanted to forgive. Allah wants to punish and complete a sunnah. And Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, anything that harms you is difficult for him. Harisun <laughs> alaykum. He wants to hold on to you and protect you at all cost. He was protective of his people, even the ones that tried to kill him. Even the ones that tried to kill him. You know, just a few years before then, when he was at Hudaybiyah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to try to make hajj, no weapons, no intention for war, the Quraysh sent 80 people with masks on their faces to try to kill the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 80, 80 assassins. And the Muslims were able to defeat those 80 assassins, disarm them, not kill any of them. They disarmed them, took their weapons, and then took their masks off. And now we know who they are. They were from Quraysh. And then what the Messenger of Allah sent them back. He sent them back. And he said, what's, what's wrong with Quraysh? Why are they so obsessed with war? <laughs> Rasulullah, after three wars with them, this is what Rasulullah thinks of Quraysh. This is what he thinks of them. And so Allah says, now listen to this, Bil rahim." When it comes to those who come to the faith, especially the Messenger وسلم, is compassionate, empathetic. He knows how they feel. He sympathizes with them, he empathizes with them, he, and he's loving and caring, Rahim to them. The surah that did not begin with the Rahmah of Allah, ends with the Rahmah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? This, we, we, you know, people don't study Qur'an. People don't contemplate, Why don't they contemplate the Qur'an? You know, as a shallow read, when people just say, oh, it doesn't even begin with Bismillah. There's so much war in the Qur'an. There's so much fighting in the Qur'an. You don't even know what you're talking about. This is a surah, not of Allah's punishment, actually, but this is the, the surah of the forever mercy and love and care of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was given as a gift to humanity. May Allah azza wa jal help us appreciate the love and care of our Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam for all of humanity. And may Allah make us real ambassadors of his book to all of humanity. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.